this thing on. Yep, it's running. All right, guys, Ryan Lebron here. Just to give you all a quick rundown of the most recent event. Uh, today is April 9th. It's a Sunday, year 2021. And uh, I just had a minor breakdown on my truck. Uh, it didn't break down to the point where I was on the side of the highway. It wasn't that kind of breakdown. To me, there's two different kinds of breakdowns. The one kind of breakdown where something minor comes up is a little, uh, uh, an indicator light come up on the dashboard that lets you know something ain't right. But yet you still got time to uh, reroute all your plans under that load and drive it to the closest possible dealership available. To me, that's a minor breakdown. The major breakdowns is when something happens and all of a sudden the truck shuts down on the side of the highway and now you need a tow into the dealership. So to me, there's a minor breakdown, something going on, you need to reroute everything and drive it to a dealership right away. And a major breakdown where you get stuck on the side of the highway and need to get towed in. Well, this weekend I had a minor breakdown. Uh, bottom line is the load I'm under is set to deliver in the Dallas Fort Worth area was supposed to be last night by Saturday evening well Saturday morning I get up do my pre-trip inspection uh, at the loves in Jackson Tennessee most of you who have been out on the highway know where that's at and I get rolling well I figure you know there's a loves in West Memphis and there's a speed coat in West Memphis I need to get a brand new steer tire. So I'm gonna stop off at one of those. It'll be about 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning by the time I get to West Memphis. I'll see about getting a steer tire since it's relatively early. It shouldn't take me long to get in and get out. So I get to Speed Co in West Memphis and when I get there, <clears throat> the guy says, yeah, he says, you're next in line. We got one in the shop already in front of you. Uh, he said, you're next in line. Go ahead and get behind this bay over here, and we'll pull you in as soon as we're ready. Okay, no problem. Four and a half hours later, I get my new tire on my truck, and I'm on my way. Well, the funny thing about that is, I just barely, I get, guys, if y'all know anything about the West Memphis area, y'all know that Interstate 40 and Interstate 55 junction in West Memphis through all, all, all the truck stops and, and, and the Blue Beacon and the Flying J and the TA and the Pilot and all that. I-55 and I-40 run neck and neck together for a couple of miles through uh, West Memphis. Well, the, the, the speed co is right behind the Petro. If anybody knows about West Memphis, y'all know this. Well, I got back on the highway and I took that little curve to stay on I-40 West, so I had to go under the I-55 bridge because I was going I-40 West. As soon as I come out from under that I-55 bridge, my solid yellow check light come on, okay? The, the solid yellow engine light, check light, whatever you want to call it, it's actually called a mill light, M-I-L malfunction indicator light that little mill light come on no other light just the mill light and I had just left the speed code just a few minutes beforehand after being in there getting a new tire for four and a half hours so now my mill light is on M-I-L malfunction indicator light well I learned the hard way back in November if I take care of little bitty things as they come up they don't create bigger things later so I know from personal experience sometimes when that mill light comes on and they nothing else comes on no other light comes on the truck don't act crazy it don't start acting stupid it don't you know there's nothing else and it ain't throwing no codes nine times out of ten that mill light will clear itself out within a couple days but this time 
because of all my past experiences dealing with mechanical issues and 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 in the shop for major stuff when it could have been in the shop for something minor nope i don't care i i got a, a hold of dispatch and said look my check light came on i'm doubling back to memphis i'm going to put this rascal in the shop they said okay let us know when you're done with repairs all right guys now from this point i'm gonna go ahead and skip a whole lot of details and just tell y'all right up front i wind up going to truck uh, uh excuse me tag truck center on the south side of memphis just a few minutes away from the love's truck stop off of i-240 and lamar uh anybody that knows about south memphis y'all know that the love's truck stop is off of 240 well, the Tag Truck Center is just a few minutes away from that. It don't take long to get there, just a few minutes. Well, I went over there and checked in this morning at 0700. And the lady behind the counter said, you're next in line. We got one in the shop in front of you right now. Here he is. You're going to be next in line. We'll get to you as soon as we can. Okay, no problem. About an hour or so later, the mechanic comes and gets my truck. Pulls it in, puts the computer on it. Long story short, now here's where I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what's going on. What happened while my check light come on. Okay, well maybe I can't. No, I can't. Alright. Let me just do this and hopefully the camera will pick it up. Alright, I don't know if y'all can see it, but this little part right here called the pressure port. That thing was clogged up really, really bad. You take this plug off right here, you take these two bolts out right here, and then the and then the and then the block comes right out. Alright? And that exposes the ports in here, the pressure port. Alright? Now what the mechanic told me about that, the mechanic told me that if you ever get a piece of the cable broke off from one of your air tanks, you need a piece of it about four or five inches long. He said, you take that cable right there. And you put one end of it inside of a drill. As soon as you get that pressure port opened up, you shove that cable down there and you squeeze the trigger on the drill. And the drill motor will shove that cable down in that port because the port uh, is only about three or four inches long uh, or three or four inches deep. He said you shove that cable down in there, you squeeze the trigger on the drill, and that cable will clean it all out. And you ain't got to fight it or nothing. So just in case... Y'all want to check out the pressure port on y'all's truck. You take this plug off right here. Take these two bolts off. This bolt here and this bolt here. Take the, it just pops right out. And the mechanic told me you take a little piece of cable about four or five inches long. Shove the tip of it into your drill. Shove that cable down inside the port. Squeeze the trigger on the drill. And it's kind of like using a plumbing snake down a drain line. It just it just cleans it all out real good. That's one of the problems that was causing my check light to come on this morning, uh, uh, yesterday. A well, mill light, check light, whatever you want to call it. It's actually a mill light, malfunction indicator light. The other problem, he said, is a combination between the pressure port and the intake manifold temperature sensor. So let me go ahead and show you what that part is and what he had to do. Looking at the driver's side of a DD15 engine is this part right here. He said on the old style of DD15, which is what I have, he had to take this out and as soon as he took it out, this rascal in here is built out of aluminum so he had to re-tap the treads and then create new treads in there and put a new temperature sensor inside the new treads so he said the new style of a Detroit diesel is not built with that aluminum socket so when they take that temperature sensor out everything is fine but because I have the old style of Detroit diesel is built with that aluminum socket so anytime they take that temperature sensor out they have to retap the treads so once again, the pressure port was clogged up and my intake manifold temperature sensor went out. So between both of those, 
it caused my check light to come on or the mill light, malfunction indicator light. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, Tag Truck Center is rather expensive for all of you owner operators or owner operator wannabes. Tag Truck Center in Memphis is very, very expensive. $185 per hour labor. The first two hours of that is computer diagnostics. So you may as well say $400 for computer diagnostics for two hours. But here's the catch. They also implement, I guess you could say, that into the total uh, estimate cost. So let's just say you there, you get repair work done and they give you a total estimate of $2,000. Well, the first two hours at $185 an hour is diagnostics that's inside of that estimate. Now, the good thing about it is, maybe I caught it at a good time, I don't know. Maybe I caught it at a good time where it wasn't all that busy, I'm not sure. All I do know is that I checked in this morning at 0700 and by 12.30 p.m. they were done with me, handed me my keys, I wrote them a check and I was leaving. That's, that's what I call fast service, guys. So for you owner operators and you drivers who are thinking about becoming an owner operator, you have to ask yourself one simple question. The hourly labor rate at that place you brought your truck to might be expensive. Maybe, and you don't wanna pay that high price. But how fast do you wanna get back out of there? The longer every single day that you down, that's money that you ain't making. Plain and simple. So would you rather pay the $185 an hour labor rate, get in and get out that day? Or would you rather go somewhere else a lot cheaper like 85 to 100 dollars an hour and have to sit for two or three days unfortunately as an owner operator you have to make that kind of choice once in a while so anyway any of my united states friends that are owner operators or owner operator wannabes uh tag truck center in memphis tennessee is quite expensive as i said a moment ago 185 dollars an hour but I will tell you this much. They are affiliated with Creek Carrier. They do a lot of work for Creek Carrier. So because of that, my total estimate was going to be around $575 for the two hour diagnostics and the actual work cleaning the port out and changing that one sensor. My estimate was around $575. The lady at the desk called me over there. She says, come here. She says, you're with Crete, plus you've been real nice to us since you've been here. I'm gonna help you out a little bit. She got on that computer and she done a little David Copperfield stuff in that system and she pulled $100 off the estimate. So my total bill for this computer diagnostics and the pressure port clean out and the intake manifold temperature sensor, total bill came to $428.43. Now, guys, I don't know if that is because I'm with Creek Carrier or it's because they wasn't all that busy and the supervisors wasn't around and she was able to wiggle some things around. I'm just letting you know what happened to me today. So anyway, that's the latest for Cajun Transport. And now I'm back under the load that I started with and I'll be... If everything goes well, I'll be delivering the load tomorrow, two days late, but I'm down two days and I'm only out $430 in repairs when it could be so, so much worse. Last November, I was down for two weeks and I had to write a check for 11,000. So owner operator wannabes, you better stack up your money. And I mean, thick 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 get you a stockpile of money like a thick pile of peanut butter i mean stock it up if you ain't bought your truck yet you better stock that money up big time because one little bitty thing go wrong and them dealerships are expensive anyway hope y'all enjoyed the update over and out